knows very well the arguments of the time. He knows what's going on. He knows that circumcision, as we know from Galatians, is the big issue even in the Christian community. Not among Jews. They were doing it anyway, like Muslims do and Arabs do and everyone does in the Middle East. Okay, that, that's not a big issue. It's just done. Just a matter of routine. It's the big issue in the Pauline mission situation. Because uh, for Paul to move in the Gentile world, the, the circumcision is, is a huge impediment. <laughs> How are you going to take someone who's 35 years old and say you've got to be circumcised without anesthesia? Are you kidding me? This is like a huge impediment. And, and why should I be circumcised? Because the Old Testament said that that's the sign of the covenant. Now, now it's maybe just dumb, superstitious, taboo. It's of no consequence. Forget the medical or non-medical things. Egyptians used it. Semitic peoples took it as a religious thing. So the Jews, like them or not, had this as something that was like baptism, if you want. But if you're going to convert people to a Judaic type of mystery religion, not one having to do with Mithra or uh, Osiris or uh, some other uh, Eastern Orpheus cult, but a Jesus cult based on Hebrew scripture, then the issue of circumcision becomes front and center. So Paul has to deal with that. And he does in Galatians head on. He says, no, absolutely not. Don't do it. But the James party are insisting on it. Now, does anyone doubt what I'm saying on that issue? How do we know it? Because Paul tells me the party of the circumcision, the sum from James, came down. So we know that they were insisting on these things. And he then spends the rest of Galatians in a huge emotional outpouring against circumcision. Do you mean like Paul was circumcised? I think he says he was, yeah, in one of his letters, Philippians. And then Acts says he has some of his other people circumcised so that he doesn't have to deal with this issue. And then the cry is that he brings uncircumcised people into the temple and that's what causes the riot in the temple. It would be like going to Mecca and not being a Muslim and trying to sneak into the Hajj. I mean, these people are fanatics, let's face it. I'm not trying to excuse them say they're wonderful people. I'm just trying to recreate the, the, the picture better than Mel Gibson does. <laughs> any case uh, so that's all we're trying to do and, uh, for better or for worse so okay that's my explanation of Cornelius' name that these people know a lot more than you know or I knew and they're very subtle and they're extremely uh, able purveyors of the position that they're interested in um, I hate to say proselytizing, but, uh, you know, um, promoting across the whole Mediterranean. And I do honestly believe that they were successful. They knew what they were doing. They knew the people they were dealing with. I mean, if you were to go to an ad agency today, or, uh, you know, one of the famous uh, Madison Avenue ad agencies and said, get me a promotional campaign for a certain thing, that uh, this is the thing, a uh, product I, I want to, uh, you know, move around and get to be widespread. I don't know if you say why, I, don't, I have no idea what moved these people. The, the, the people who wrote this document were as effective as any Madison Avenue ad agency. They knew what they were doing, they knew the force they were dealing with, and they, this is how they presented their data, and it's been totally effective. Not only effective, it's lasted for 2,000 years, and I'm sure long beyond you and me, 2,000 years from now, it'll still be out there. That's, you can't do much better than that. That's one of the most powerful, uh, marketing promotional document that you could possibly have. Uh, so, I mean, and this picture is going along. Whatever I say that counterindicates it will be lost in the torrent of uh, <laughs> oh, the historical flood that this thing rides upon. It has no bearing whatsoever. But for our purposes, it's fun. We only live once. We like to use our heads. So we try to analyze the material. And so we're only talking about Cornelius and if it relates to the Lex Cornelia to Sicarius. And the other important thing is the Lex Cornelia to Sicarius mentions the word Sicarius, which we now begin to realize is a more and more important thing. At one point in Acts 21, Paul is going to be asked by a Roman centurion, are you a Sicari? Are you one of those Sicari that went into the wilderness? And Acts is actually going to use the word Sicari to refer to Paul. And Paul says, oh, no, no, not me. But others were. 
And I think Sicari is a name for the circumcision party. Why? Because I think that's how the Romans referred to, Sicari, to the circumcision. Because of the knife they used to circumcise themselves. That's way beyond where I was when they used it. And uh, that's, that knife was double as an assassin's knife and a circumciser's knife. Josephus chooses to give us the assassin part of it and chooses to conceal the other implication. So, going back to Paul. Galatians 2. Am I losing you? Some from James came down, and Peter, who used to eat with Gentiles, and Barnabas with him, was no longer uh, willing to do this, withdrew from this situation. Barnabas copied him in this hypocrisy, and they no longer basically uh, 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 agreed with me. And I withstood them to their face and told them, you know, that they were hypocrites and blah, 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 blah. But they uh, were under the James authority, and I was not. And uh, so, uh, this is not James, the brother of John, it's James, the brother of Jesus, so that's important. Um, these people, Paul also calls the party of the circumcision, or those of the circumcision. And, it's not, and, and it also at one point says, we agreed in Jerusalem that they would go to the circumcision and I would go to the uncircumcision. But the Roman word for circumcision is sicarius in some way. Lex Cornelia de Sicarius is the word. Uh, I never realized this until a couple of years back when I came upon uh, Oregon, who was an early church father. And I didn't realize that these things were uh, so uh, big in the uh, early years of the church. Oregon apparently castrated himself. And uh, therefore, the people who laughed at Oregon for doing this called him a Sicarius because he had castrated himself. And uh, it's, again, I think Jerome who's laughing at him and saying that he, uh, you know, he misunderstood uh, um, the passage in the Gospel of John or other Gospels saying, make yourself eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven. He took that literally, making yourself into a eunuch for the kingdom of heaven. Oregon, and they called, he said he was a Sicarius. So the minute I saw that, I realized that Sicari had to do not only with um, terrorism, but circumcision. So if you're um, just like, I'm sure the Bin Laden party in Iraq or the insurgents in Iraq don't call themselves um, terrorists. They have a better 